Hello and welcome to the ninth video in this series. Before we get going with the strategies, we're going to clean the code up a little bit. Notebooks are excellent for exploring and looking at how things work. They're not so good for creating code that you can reuse elsewhere in your program. So we're going to start with a file called utils.py, which I've created in the root of the code folder of the project. Ignore, please, this tester.py. That's for something I want to explain in this video. So inside utils.py, we're going to define a couple of functions and they're very, very quick. So I'm going to paste them in. One of them is get his data file name. That takes two parameters, the pair, so say euro US dollar, the granularity, let's say H1, and it simply returns the path in our his data folder to the particular file that we want to get. The second function is even simpler. It's called get instruments data file name. It returns the path to our instruments.pkl. Now you might be wondering why we're writing this here when we could just put this in our code anywhere we need it and also this. Well, if you imagine that in the future we want to change this directory to where the historical data is stored, we don't want to change it in a hundred places throughout our code where we've written it. It's better just to have it in one place here and whenever you need it, just call this function. Then we only need to change it in one place if it ever does. And likewise, we've got the same thing here. Now I'd just like to check that these work and to do so I'm going to type something that if you're new to Python might look a little bit strange and this is if underscore underscore name is equal to main at the moment pass means do nothing. So what is this? Well this is the reason why I've written this tester.py. In this test.py I've got one line, please don't write any code, just let me explain. And all it does is print tester.py underscore underscore name colon and then after a space or print whatever this name variable is. Now if I go to the console and execute tester.py, it prints for us that its underscore underscore name is equal to underscore underscore main underscore underscore. So back in the code, the first thing is this underscore underscore name is a predefined variable inside Python. And whatever script you execute, this predefined variable name will have the value of underscore underscore main underscore underscore. Which is why when we've executed tester.py, we can see that the value of name underscore underscore is underscore underscore main. So why is this important? Well, if I go into utils.py now and import our tester file, when we do this importing, all of the code inside this file is executed. Now, normally your files contain just function or class definitions or something like that. So nothing actually happens. Things are just defined. But in some cases, you actually want code to be executed. And in this case, if we now execute utils.py, we're importing tester. So this line will be executed and we can see what value underscore underscore name has. So if I run python utils.py, you can see now that the name variable of tester is no longer underscore underscore main, it's actually tester. And the reason is, is because the script we executed was utils.py, which means utils.py, it will have underscore underscore main as its name variable. And tester now has the name of the script that was executed. So why this is important? Well, it's important because you can use this variable name to specify code that you'd like to be executed if the script in question is executed. So utils.py, we're never really going to want to run this script because all we're doing is defining functions that will import and use in other scripts later on. However, I would like to quickly print out what these functions do. So down the bottom here, I'm going to say if the name variable in this script is equal to underscore underscore main, which means have I executed this script here? If I have, then let's execute the code inside here. So the first thing we're going to do is print out a file name. And what we can also do is remove the tester import because we don't need it anymore. And back in the console, just run this and you can see I get the path, his data, and everything looks all right. The last one to check then is the instruments data file name. And that looks pretty good as well. So we can be fairly sure without adding unit tests or anything that these functions are working. Okay then, so that's it for this video. We have a couple of utility functions set up. In the next video, we're going to go a bit more complicated and start setting up an instrument class. So thanks very much for watching and see you in the next one.